Hello biology class. Welcome to the very first lecture of the respiratory system unit as you can see up here respiratory system. Uh, it is focused on the lungs but we are going to talk about how it gets there. We're going to talk about our nose and the areas inside our face as well as our throat, our trachea, bronchi, and our lungs. So we are going to spend a little bit more time focused on the lungs uh, why there are three lobes here and only two lobes here, uh, exactly how we get oxygen out of the air and release CO2, we're going to talk about that. Uh, but we are going to start with an introduction overall, and then we're going to focus on the nose or the nasal cavity today, as you can see from the title. So lesson one, introduction and nasal cavity. We're going to talk about um, a specific condition first. Uh, and that's why the key point number one is conditions. So cystic fibrosis, uh, it is a genetic respiratory disease. So cystic fibrosis happens to people as soon as they're born. There's nothing that you can do about it. It is all about um, what genes you get. Uh, so um, what happens is your lungs become full of thick mucus and it makes it difficult to breathe. So usually if you have your airway, it's just like a tube, it would branch off to be thinner. Um, there's a very thin layer of mucus that facilitates air going by. But when you have cystic fibrosis, as this bottom picture does, you've got way too much mucus and it actually stops the oxygen from going through. There can also be blood in the mucus. Um, the really big thing is that you cannot absorb oxygen and because you cannot absorb oxygen your lungs are more prone to infection so it's very very difficult to be active there's a lot of coughing there's a lot of treatment involved uh, so cystic fibrosis essentially clogs the lungs with mucus it is a much more severe and uh, persistent um, and like always occurring form of asthma where asthma does make mucus in the lungs cystic fibrosis it, with cystic fibrosis, it is there all the time, uh, and it is much more thick and harder to deal with. So how is it treated? You treat it with antibiotics so that you don't get an infection. This will prevent infections. That will make the condition worse. Um, and it's because we take a lot, they take a lot of antibiotics because it is these infections that usually kill people. Uh, so stopping those lung infections is crucial. And there are now medications that can extend a patient's life into their 50s and 60s, uh, which is a lot more than uh, even just 10 or 20 years ago uh, when you know 30 to 40 was kind of what might occur. Um, check out these videos about uh, COPD. Uh, it is a disorder that affects the lungs and you just kind of feel like you're breathing through a tube. So check those out. That's also part of the conditions part. Um, but the lungs are something that you really want to protect. Um, they're really important. Just like everyday things, just walking upstairs, um, getting excited about sports, things like that. You need your lungs for. And people that don't have healthy lungs, uh, like the people that you can see in these videos, um, have a lot of trouble making it through everyday life. So the primary functions of gas uh, of um, the respiratory system. That's key point two. The key, the primary function is gas exchange. So to bring oxygen in and to get CO two out. Um, this part is external respiration, getting air from the environment into the lungs and then out again. Uh, we have internal respiration as well, and that occurs when um, the blood transfers the oxygen to the cells and then they can use it. So there's another transfer of oxygen there and that is what's called internal respiration. So that's a very important difference. External respiration is bringing the air into our body and then internal respiration is the actual usage of oxygen within our cells. Whatever it needs to, whatever cells it needs to go to to be used, that part is internal respiration. The cells also release CO2 and that is brought to the lungs for external respiration where that CO2 is uh, breathed out and we breathe more oxygen in. Um, another primary function of the respiratory system is to produce vocal sounds, singing, humming, talking, 
and it also uh, facilitates the sense of smell because we can bring air particles into our head so that we can detect what is in there. So there are some primary functions of the respiratory system. The big one, obviously, is gas exchange, external and internal respiration. So we know external respiration is essentially breathing, but we also call it ventilation. So ventilation is the movement of air into the lungs. Um, it involves quite a few parts. They are known as the upper respiratory system and the lower respiratory system. So upper is essentially within your head, uh, I guess from your throat up. And then lower is your trachea uh, down into your lungs. So there are two parts. So the first two lessons are going to focus on the upper respiratory system. And the second parts are going to focus on the lower respiratory system. That will get us to lesson four. So the upper respiratory system consists of these parts. There is the nose or the nasal cavity right here. Uh, the sinuses, you can see a few of them in this diagram. There's this space in your face. I always remember that space in your face is a sinus right there and right there. There's a few more. Uh, we have our mouth, which also facilitates breathing with our nose. Our pharynx, which is broken into our three parts. As you already know, there's the nasopharynx near the nose, the oropharynx near the mouth, and the laryngopharynx that is near the larynx which is our last part of our upper respiratory system. Again, the larynx is the vocal cords. So it is how we speak, it is how we talk, uh, and it is visible in males as the Adam's apple. So the nasal cavity. The nasal cavity is a large air-filled space above and behind the nose in the middle of the face. There are lots of ridges in there. Uh, you can't just shove things up there easily. There's lots of kind of twists and turns. Uh, and one specific part of your nose is the nasal septum. It is the part that divides the cavity in two and why you have two nostrils. So um, you can actually feel it. I'm not going to recommend you pick your nose, but if you stick your fingers just in the edge of your nose, there's the hard part that comes right after the squishy part in between your two nostrils. That is the start of your nasal septum. It is the dividing uh, part between two cavities that will eventually meet kind of in the middle back of your nose or throat in your nasopharynx. Um, mine is actually deviated. It is kind of curved at one part. If you stick your fingers in far enough, you can feel it. Uh, and if I was to try to turn it forward, my nose would be crooked. So um, that's something that you're going to do a little bit of research on as we go forward, but that's, I think, in the your job section. So uh, it provide, the nasal cavity provides the nasal passage for inhaled air from the nostrils to the nasopharynx and down through the rest of the pharynx into the trachea and the lungs, which is the rest of the respiratory tract. So the nasal passage is the start. Uh, it does a lot of warming and moistening of air, uh, which is why it's important that you breathe through your nose and not through your mouth in the winter. Uh, we also have sinuses. So that these are these here. There are four types, and I'd like you to know these four types. There's the maxillary sinuses, right down here, the pink ones. There's the sphenoidal sinuses, which is actually this one. It is in the bridge of your nose, kind of actually a little bit farther back, not right in the bridge of your nose, but behind the bridge of your nose. There are the ethmoidal sinuses, which are the green ones right here. And then there are the frontal sinuses up here. And you can often feel them get full of mucus when you have a cold. They can get very sore. You can get a sinus headache. These are the paranasal sinuses because they are connected to the nasal cavity. Paranasal connected to the, na uh, the nose. So, what are the purpose of these sinuses? They are hollow spaces inside our face to moisten and warm the air that we breathe so that it's not as harsh on our, that should say our throat, and lungs. So they have the same function as the nasal cavity. The nasal cavity warms and moistens the air. It filters out different um, particles like dust and hair that we would breathe in. Uh, and then the, the sinuses do a very similar thing. Uh, they're full of mucus often, not full, but they have mucus lining them to warm and moisten the air um, so that it's not as harsh on us. Um, when mucus builds up inside, we can feel it. There's often pressure. That happens when we have a cold. 
Um, and when this muc mucous membrane becomes infected, we get what's called a sinus infection, and we treat that often with antibiotics, so those um, attack bacteria that may have built up in our sinuses. They're a little bit tricky because they're a hole in your face. So it's a place that um, is necessary to warm the air, but it's the exact environment that is um, good for bacteria and infections to start up. So that's why sinus infections are very common, as well as sinus headaches and sinus congestion in the winter. So again, here are the um, sinuses, the frontal sinuses, the ethmoidal sinuses, the sphenoidal sinus in the middle, and then the maxillary sinuses um, underneath and kind of into your cheeks a little bit here. So why should we inhale through our nose? Uh, I kind of talked a little bit about it already, but here's some official information on it. When we breathe through our mouths, we don't get the benefit of our sinuses, which warms and moistens the air. And the hairs in our nose filter out a lot of dust and other particles. Some of us have more uh, hairs in their nose than others. Uh, check out a couple of these videos. One that goes up the nose, you can kind of see all the ridges and all the twists and turns. Uh, a little bit dirty, and you can see the hair interesting and then a video about a deviated septum so check those out your job is to go to this website and fill in the blanks and answer the questions i gave you the place to go here so you are very very lucky congratulations um if you have any questions about anything let me know we went over all the key points and i will see you in class sometime soon hopefully have a good one